Um, so today I'm talking about uh, hardware accessibility. Um, what the hell is it and why does minimizing system requirements matter in games? Uh, so this is me over here. Uh, as Gail said, final year software engineering student um, at the University of Portsmouth. Uh, I've got three years of uh, experience in IT support, uh, working with all kinds of hardware, um, and surprisingly, uh, a lot of Windows XP still going around. Um, and last year, I spent a year running my own game studio, so I'm uh, a bit up to scratch on what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so what is hardware accessibility? What do I mean when I say that? Um, so hardware, we should all be familiar with that by now. That is the stuff our software runs on. Um, accessibility, also another important factor of what we're hopefully uh, incorporating into the stuff we build. Uh, the fact of being able to be reached or obtained easily in this uh, circumstance. Together, I'm putting it as the ability of users to meet the hardware requirements needed for software, and today specifically uh, video games. So, uh, for consumers, what are the barriers they're facing when they uh, try and uh, um, purchase hardware? Uh, affordability, that's the main one. Uh, consumers just simply aren't able to afford the latest and greatest uh, hardware on the market. Uh, and building on from that availability, they might be able to afford it, but um, due to shortages, like in 2020 and 2021, um, they're not able to uh, pick those up from the market. Uh, and uh, the final point there, compatibility. Either they have the hardware and the software they want to run isn't compatible with it, or uh, they have other friends on other machines and they're trying to play across those platforms. So, uh, how big of a problem is it? I've got some data here from a site called Can You Run It? Uh, it's a site that allows users to test their hardware requirements against um, uh, games on, uh, which are available on the Steam page, uh, because developers these days uh, give out a minimum system requirement and they're recommended usually. Um, and it just goes to show that the latest games there, uh, Hogwarts Legacy and Last of Us Part One, about 40% of people that are testing their computers against it um, are meeting those minimum system requirements. Uh, furthermore, GTA V, almost a decade old now, only 50% of people testing it are still meeting those requirements. Uh, just goes to show that older hardware on the market is still quite uh, prevalent. Uh, there's a more general uh, problem with system requirements. It's subjective. Um, a game running well or working properly is uh, subjective to the user. Um, people might want 30 FPS, Games, people might want thousands of FPS uh, when they play their game. You just don't know. Uh, there's also no standard for what uh, minimum or recommended means. The, the developer on the right here clearly taking uh, the neck of uh, requirements. Um, yeah, so minimum could be uh, 720p or 30 FPS, or it could be 1080p at 60. Uh, we don't know. Sometimes developers state it, sometimes they don't. Uh, so, Going forward, uh, what can we do as software developers to help uh, correct this problem? Uh, as software developers, we can't manipulate the condition of the hardware market. We can't make uh, graphics cards more available or um, make them cheaper. Uh, but we can work on increasing the lifespan of existing hardware um, by building our software for it. Uh, we can hope to improve cross-platform compatibility between devices and enable a wide range of options uh, for input. Uh, specifically, uh, one thing we could do to increase the uh, lifespan of hardware is scalability. Um, it's about providing options to scale the hardware intensity of games. Um, so you're know, toggling graphics, toggling off post-processing effects, um, stuff like that. Uh, this is probably, uh, in general, in the industry, quite good at this at the moment, especially at the uh, top level companies. Um, it's great for the user, it allows them to uh, kind of tackle that subjective aspect of running well. Uh, they can choose whether they want to a thousand FPS potato or they want about a slideshow of like the 4K graphics. It's up to them. Uh, they can choose that compromise. Uh, another thing to consider, alternative rendering. Um, does the game need to be exclusively 3D? Can, uh, for example, in the strategy game, can you have a 2D option? Uh, to display the same information in uh, still a uh, lovely stylized way uh, um, and just cut off that uh, 3D uh, overhead. 
it's a high effort um, thing to implement, but high reward in terms of the uh, performance impact. And building off that, do we even need 3D in the first place? There's plenty of examples of uh, 2D games that are outselling 3D games these days, um, especially in strategy or uh, smaller indie games, 2D should be able to represent everything you need. Uh, Cross-platform compatibility. Uh, so this is about building across multiple platforms and making sure they're compatible with each other. Um, it enables users to kind of tackle that accessibility aspect, um, working, um, allowing them to purchase hardware um, because they, they know the software they're going to um, want to run is working on that hardware. Um, and yes, so for the users, it can enable them to play with their friends across different devices. Win-win. Um, Uh, enabling input. Okay, so this is about um, allowing users to choose uh, what kind of input device they want to use to play their games and uh, use their software. Um, it counters the need for users to purchase additional uh, peripherals, uh, such as um, if they're having a local, like a LAN party, they need additional controllers or people need to bring their own. Um, one great solution for this is uh, allowing users to use their mobile phones um, so if you can get uh, input on your mobile phone, use that to control games and such, that's a great solution because everyone these days has a mobile phone. Um, looking a bit more into the future, but it's still kind of current, cloud gaming, uh, just skip the user's hardware entirely, um, just offload it to the cloud, they can do all the processing and then the user can just use it to stream uh, on their lower spec device. Uh, Stadia has failed, sadly, RAP. Um, but cloud gaming is still uh, part of the future. Uh, Microsoft has their own cloud gaming service at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, so why should we do these things? Um, again, going back to the percentage, if we can make sure more people are being able to meet that minimum requirement, you get a wider audience reach uh, for your software. It gives you a competitive advantage over uh, competing games and such. And uh, the product's going to last a bit longer in terms of uh, hardware. Uh, to summarize, so users facing issues with uh, affordability, availability, and compatibility, uh, we can allow for scalability in the hardware intensity uh, to kind of counter those. Um, consider whether 3D is necessary or if we, or if we can offer alternatives. And uh, last but not least, uh, cross platform compatibility and cloud gaming might just be uh, the end to these problems anyway. So, yeah. Thank you for listening. I just wondered how much do you think the results of the um, Can I Run It are skewed by the fact that only people who have some doubt about whether their hardware can run the game will run the compatibility checker? Um, yes, I did have some doubts about that. Um, uh, that needs a bit more research. Uh, I didn't have enough time to go over the Steam hardware survey, which is quite uh, important for this. Um, but I did a bit of research on like, yeah, on the Steam hardware server, there's a lot more graphics cards which should be running this. Um, and I think probably one of the main reasons is people are on laptops and they've still got integrated uh, graphics cards, which are probably skewing the results a bit in that direction. So not the most, true, not the most trustworthy data, um, but yeah, a bit skewed, for sure. Good question. Thank you. Um, to what extent do you think the sort of cloud gaming solution is possibly just swapping out hardware requirements of like your actual machine for essentially like Wi-Fi, internet, network mm -hmm. requirements instead? Um, so the question was, to what extent do you think it's just switching the like raw computer hardware for more uh, in the network requirements? Okay. Um, yes, I think, uh, but I think the network requirements are a bit more global. Everyone has access to 4G uh, more or less than they do having their own personal computer. Um, and I think uh, the infrastructure is, I think because the infrastructure is for everyone, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of meet those requirements than it is a personal uh, hardware requirement. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Were there any others?